Hi, uh, today I would like to talk to you about Tamara Bakelia. And um, so this is fourth episode of Georgian female artist. And I wanted to point out that Christina Darcia was supposed to join me for this segment, but due to some technical reasons, we're not able to arrange this. Um, but Christina was able to provide me with some of the materials that I used for the presentation that I will be sharing with you now. So let me just share this. Okay, so let's start by saying who was Tamara Abagelia and why it's important for us to know about her. So Abagelia is one of the most accomplished and talented artists of 1930s, 1940s Georgia. She was the only one Georgian female sculptor whose name survives from this early Soviet period, but also she's designer of costumes for theater and film and illustrator of major works of Georgian literature, such as um, Chotaru Stavel and Vajab Shavala. In addition, Abekilia was well-respected pedagogue of the uh, Tbilisi Academy of the Arts, and her students include Natalia Kushvili, who is also part of today's video presentation, and Alexander Adams will talk about um, Natalia Kushvili with me later. So in 1942, Abekilia was granted the title of Honored Artist of the Georgian Socialist Republic, and she was pretty well-respected, well-known, and uh, well-praised in this period of time. I wanted to show you just a few of her works to have you to give you a rough idea. So uh, we see illustration to the night in the Panther skin from 1930s, sorting corns from 1929, and we will avenge 1944, probably one of her uh, well-known works um, since it represented kind of uh, the painful victory achieved or about to being achieved during the World War II and the pain experienced and shared by many women uh, around the Soviet Union. Uh, but also at the same time, we see that women figure is important to her and uh, she is at the front and center of her work from different times. So I would like to start from the beginning and as we, um, we did with other uh, female artists that we kind of researched for this um, video series. So, who were her parents and um, what was her family like? Fortunately, I wasn't able to find information about Abakelia's mother, but what I know is that Rigol Abakelia, her father was member of the highest court commission of the Georgian Socialist Republic, and he was executed during the Stalin's Great Purge of 1938. He was accused of being a member of the Polish Secret Service and working for the Polish government. Uh, Abakelia's uncle, Josep Abakelia was professor and the leading Georgian specialist in, in treating tuberculosis. In 1930, he founded the first Georgian Institute for the study of tuberculosis, but was also persecuted by the Stalin's regime in 1938. He was accused of spying for the Western governments and preparing an act, an act of terrorism against the Soviet regime. And we could only imagine how hard it was for Abakelia to kind of work um, for the Soviet regime after they did this to her uncle and her father. But um, the bitter reality of that time was that people had to continue living through the pain and kind of just in order to survive and to be able to do anything, they just had to kind of adhere to this, um, to the censure and to the terror that was surrounding them. Nabakelia's life, I feel like, is a good example of this, unfortunately. So, uh, as I mentioned, I was able to find information about Abakelia's mother and also direct access to Abakelia's diary that she wrote in 1918-1940s. And I know that some parts of this, uh, of this um, diary was published at some point. Also, there are about five to six books published about Abakelia's life and work uh, from 1940s to 1970s, but all of them are part of the Tbilisi public library system. And because of the pandemic, I didn't have access to, to those books when I was there in summer, but hopefully I will be able to do it at some point to, to see those books and research them and use them for further research about Tamara Bagelia. So um, in her childhood, um, 
Abakelia traveled a lot during West Georgia and its landscapes and faces of people from Mereti and Gure informed her later visual works. She was born in Honi in Mereti. And in her diary, Bakele wrote, um, it's often told about me that I feel well Georgian countryside, faces of the people from there. This is not accidental. My memory was deeply imprinted by the faces of peasants, pictures of their work and leisure, their wooden houses, luscious green yards. They were the first impressions I received from my homeland. I saw market days taking place in small provincial towns, provincial towns on Fridays and Sundays. I saw biblical figures of old peasants as they drove bull-ridden plows. Uh, this is quoted from Abakelia's album, edited by Gunnara Japaridze. And here we see Collecting Grapes uh, from 1946, which was also important work by Abakelia. And here we see the celebration of labor, a very traditional motif of the Soviet art, celebration of strong work ethic, strong men and women, and uh, the, on the drawback of traditional Georgian tweli or collect, uh, collect, uh, collecting wine, uh, collecting grapes for wine. So um, early years, from early childhood, Abakelia showed a deep inclination towards drawing and sculpting. She was encouraged to pursue the artistic career by her family, by living with her family and studying at the second gymnasiums for women. She created illustrations for the school journal and also brought clay from the river banks to sculpt at home. So I think it was, it's one of the characteristics for all the artists in the series oh, is so far that all of them started their artistic career when they were kids and they were very interested and passionate about this. So 1923-1929, Abakelia studies at the Tbilisi Academy of the Arts. And there she was right away noticed by Josep Nikoladze, who is of course considered the founder of modern Georgian sculpture and an important artist of the time, an important teacher. And so he became Abakelia's mentor for years to come, and they had very uh, close professional relationship over time. And she, he always admired, was early on, he, he admired Abakelia's men like sculptural ability and strength. During her student years, Abakelia attracted the attention of well known Georgian and Soviet artist Mose Toidze, and Kote Marjanishvili offered her to work on costumes for Vajab Shavala's play. And this play was not specifically staged at that point, but uh, later on, Abagelia and Marjane Shuli worked on many different performances together. But overall, during her student years, sculpture became the most important medium for Abagelia, and she devoted the bulk of her time to it. And here um, I have two works by um, Josep Nicolazzi, just to give you an idea about his style. And um, he traveled um, to France. He worked as assistant in Auguste Rodin's atelier. And uh, so we can see that he brought this influence from France into Georgia and to his own work and influenced quite uh, many sculptors after him. So it's interesting to see this works here. Uh, and then I found two archival photos uh, that are also kind of, I thought, will be interesting for you to observe. So here we have Lavrenti Beria, Alexei um, Chusev, Tamara Bakeli, uh, Jakob Nikoladze by the Institute of Marxist-Leninism in Tbilisi. And later on, we'll talk about this specific building as it is important for Abakeli's legacy. This photo was taken in 1936-1937. And also, uh, I found this photo of Tamara Bakeli surrounded by Mosetoidze, Ucha Japaridze, and other representatives of Georgian kind of artistic elite uh, that shows us that she was pretty well connected and well respected within this um, male dominated society, I would say at that time. Um, also what happened in 1930 was that Abakelia married poet, writer and playwright, Carlo Galadze, who became instrumental to the establishment of the Georgian Writers' Union and was member of the union's presidium. He was originally from Kutaisi and he was very, um, he continued to be connected to the city. 
He opened a couple of important newspapers there. Also worked with Kotemar Janishvili and became director of his theater in 1927, 1930. And he continued his career quite successfully uh, as a writer, as official figure. In 1982, Kaladze was awarded the title of honorary citizen of Tbilisi and the medal of the October revolution. I wasn't able to find his photo from his younger days of, of of them being newlyweds, but this is um, Galadze uh, when he's much older, of course. So um, right after the finishing her studies at the academy and over the following years, Abakelia created stage decorations for Rustaveli and Marjanishvili theaters and costume designs for film Arsena, Georgi Saakadze, David Guramishvili, sorry, David Guramishvili, as well as for the opera Carmen. And here we see Lustre, a costume design for uh, Mikhail Jaurelius, Georgi Saakadze, and whoever has seen this magnificent black and white film, of course, remembers the, the rich detail and very thoughtful costumes. And we have uh, Tamara Bagelia to thank for this. And there are some other costume designs for plays so of Korte Marjanishvili Theater, as well as for Georgi Saakadze on the right. Um, then a very important part of Abagelia's legacy that is mentioned by, of her, um, by, of, by many art historians of the time was her illustration for the Night in Panther Skin uh, that she worked in 1930s and uh, she completed 1937. And here we see, of course, um, we can notice it also that uh, the, the, the figure of woman is important here. She comes, comes to the forefront of the story. And although Rustaveli, of course, uh, built a lot of, of the fabula of the uh, storyline is centered around women, but um, Abageli actually highlights even more through her images, even more so than the male characters of this, um, of the story. And also what we see here are kind of main characteristics of Abagelia's style, which is monumentalism of sculpture is visible in these illustrations, as well as in uh, Russian translation of Ajab Shavala's works that Abagelia did later on. Uh, and it's also an attempt to uh, revisit the Renaissance approach to showing people at the center of the universe, form of aesthetic suitable for the Soviet thinking. And um, so we can see kind of Bagelia trying to revive this Renaissance idea that the man is the measure of all things. And we can see it in her illustration as well as in her sculpture and uh, whatever survives from her bareliefs that we will talk about in a little bit. So um, in comparison to the mainstream Soviet art, social realism, uh, Abagelia puts women front and center of the action. Women of strength and power look stern and capable of action. They're not playing secondary roles, but rather are presented as agents of change and force. And here, of course, we see this very stern looking um, woman who is full of pain, but at the same time, she's full of kind of drive to do something, to avenge, to move uh, into enemy territory and kind of avenge her pain and her son's life. I think it's very strong, uh, very charged sculpture. But at the same time, of course, Abagelia lived in a time of repression, terror and censure, and um, she had to follow the directors of the Soviet party. Otherwise she couldn't have survived, of course. And um, probably because she had the example of her father and uncle, she always remembered it, it even more painfully. And from time to time she created what was um, imperative for the Soviet regime to see. For example, the leader visiting his mother where we see Stalin visiting his mother in Gori um, and also Lavrenti de Beria as part of this picture. Uh, also, what we can observe in Abagelia is idealized naturalism. I think it's term coined by the Georgian art historian Georgi Hoshtaria, and it's a very apt way to describe the type of Soviet art. And also this work, The Family of the Farm Worker from 1939. Um, because 
we can see that Abagelia goes for realism, but at the same time, it's idealized. But simultaneously, woman here is also, she is at the center of it. She's not playing secondary role. She's carrying her burden. And she she's there because she's at the center of this composition. And I think Abagelia consciously highlighted it throughout her works because we, it's pretty much visible in, in every one of them. People and their characters interest me most. First and foremost, I want to know how they look and what they feel, she wrote in her diary. So now uh, this is the phrase of the Institute of Marxist Leninism um, located at the Rustavelli Avenue in Tbilisi. In 1936-1937, Abagelia sculpted friezes on this institute, and all of them depicted socialist progress and triumph of communism in Georgia. And this was a special project of Lavrent Beria, then the leader of the Georgian Communist Party. And the photo that I showed you earlier was actually taken near this building, which was very important at that time for the, the Soviet uh, regime of Soviet propaganda. So here you can see examples of freezes on the Institute of Marxist Leninism from 1936-1937. This is revival of the Georgian bas-relief tradition and first important example of Georgian monumental decorative sculpture in 20th century. And of course, we, we can think of um, people who continue this tradition later on, but Abagelia, it's not worth it that um, Tamara Abagelia, who was a woman, was actually the first one to, to start up this tradition and new, to bring it new life in um, early Soviet period. And here we can see also another frieze. And, um, and ideologically, it presents the very kind of the foundation of the Soviet propaganda, the Soviet, uh, whatever Soviet art was celebrating, such as labor, such as cooperation, and uh, going against uh, the capitalism and its subverted and corruptive ideology. Also an important work for Tamara Bagelia was the main facade of the Ajara Art Museum uh, titled Demonstration of Batumi Workers from 1951-1952. And there are some um, examples here. And of course, it's the same subject matter that was pretty much sanctioned by the regime as the, the way to for artists to, to represent what was happening around them. So Abagelia passed away in 1953. She was just 47 years old and she, she's buried at the Didube Pantheon. Here we see uh, a photograph of Abagelia with her spouse, Carlo Galadze and son Gulda Galadze, who actually um, also grew up to be a sculptor and an artist. And uh, Tamar Abagelia Street is located in Tatsminda area and um, it was named after Abagelia in 1953 after she passed away because she lived there. And this is where I would like to stop. And um, of course, I just would like to add that there are probably many other ways to continue this presentation and kind of add more details, but I hope it gave you some good idea um, about Tamar Abagelia where she came from, what she brought into Georgian art. And I think because she is the, the only survive, I mean, the, uh, her legacy is so uh, multifaceted and so uh, has so many ranges, it's very, it will be very rewarding to kind of continue this exploration to her life and work. Thank you.